Hello, everyone. Good morning. Jim Baker here from Mata Baker Tax Consultants. And today I have a great video for you with Leonardo from Spain. He sells custom art on Etsy. And he already has a company, but he has some questions about how taxes work because um, when he opened the company, he didn't really understand how everything works. So this is a great call. We go through some questions. It's pretty concise. And I think you'll learn a lot from it. So let's get to the call. Haven't done my taxes. I'm too turned up. Haven't done my taxes. I'm too turned up. Yeah, so Leonardo, thanks <laughs> thanks again for being here. And uh, like, like I just said, I want to repeat it again. Normally we do the calls. You can just tell me a little bit about your business and what you want to do. And uh, then we can get into some of your questions. Okay. Yeah, sure. So we started uh, last year or last year is when it took off, but we're selling art, basically uh, wall art uh, through the States and we're doing original works and some uh, public domain stuff as well. And we're basically doing retail. But apart from the retailing, we're discussing also wholesaling deals and okay. with retailers in the States. And for most of it, we're doing Etsy sales, but we also have our, our website and, and it, it's, it's starting to grow now. And we hope to get it balanced anytime soon. But basically, that's our, our main thing. We create the artworks in Spain. And what we have is a, a printer in the, in the US that you know, ships uh, everything for us. And that's, that's basically it. So you have a, a printer in the U S like a person who's printing stuff and then they're framing it there. Uh, so, so there are original works that you do and then you're co making copies and reproducing it and, and selling those. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Obviously allows you to scale. Otherwise you're limited by the amount you can paint. Yeah, exactly. Okay. No, that's, um, that's cool. So, is this person in the U.S., is it like a print company or is it like somebody you, you work with exclusively? No, yeah, it's, it's a printing company that, okay. you know, handles prints for other artists and other stores as well, I guess. So they're like a fulfillment center for um, printing and shipping stuff like that. Exactly, exactly. Okay, awesome. How are you, how are you currently getting, getting paid? Uh, well, we're getting paid uh, basically... Etsy marketplace uh, send us money every month after they handle payments and everything. And the store we have it with Shopify, so we have Shopify payments. And okay. it's also on that basis. And so they're able to send it straight to uh, to Spain? Uh, yeah, right now we're sending it to Spain, but we're changing now. I just created a, an LLC in Wyoming. So I'm, I'm waiting the the EIN number to open the bank account and get it, get it set to to get the deposit, the, the, the money in, in, in this, in the U S instead of coming to Spain. Awesome. So do you have to pay a lot of taxes on it in Spain? Yeah. Uh, yeah. After the thing is, it's, it's like a system like in the U S where you have brackets, but the brackets are shorter. So after 40 K a year in gross sales, you will still, you already have uh, to pay like 40% or something. Oh, so, so it's really high. So what yeah. are you guys, what are you guys doing uh, monthly right now in sales? Yeah. So monthly depends, but it will be between three and 4k a month and nice. we're, we're doing everything to keep growing. But for yeah, that's, that's, that. that's, that's good. Those are solid sales, especially because those, uh, there's pretty little overhead, right? I mean, there's shipping, but it's being uh, printed in the U S it's not like normal drop shipping where there's a, a higher cost for the products. The product should have a little lower cost, right? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it's 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 a good uh, ratio on on, on sales uh, yeah, cost and and, and, and 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 yeah, exactly a good margin. Uh, it's a uh, somehow costly because the the prints are like with speci special inks and papers and that kind oh, of stuff. But okay, yeah, but uh, still quality, it's, yeah, it's a, a really good margin. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So. Um, happy you're, you're coming here to open your U.S. company and everything. How, how can I help you? What questions do you have for me today? Yeah, so I have a, a set of questions that I haven't found like answers uh, online. And th the first one is I, I know this uh, figure of Edbus uh, company that if I don't have like nexus to the to the states, uh, and I'm not sure if because I've heard I've read 
different information. So we don't have uh, any office in the States and we don't have uh, uh, any person employed in the, in the, in the US. Okay. So I'm, I'm wondering if, it, if that's enough to not be considered engaged in business or trading in the US because we do have uh, partnerships with this printing company and we do sale to people in the, in the, in the United States almost completely, it's the US and Canada. And so I, I've heard that only because I'm selling to, to people in the US, I may be engaged in trade in the US. And I'm, I'm wondering if it, you know, which one is true. Yeah, we went over this uh, in the last call that I had in great detail, but just selling to people in the US doesn't mean you're doing business in the US, in my opinion, and um, in my interpretation of the law. Uh, but the other point you raise is a good one. Uh, do I have a dependent agent? And that's the concern that, that you need to think about. It, that's why I asked, does this company work just for you? Or is this printing company a company that works for a lot of different artists? So you said that they work for different artists. So they're not a dependent agent. So you they don't depend on you and they don't work just for you. They're, in their ordinary course of business, they find people from all over and print and ship stuff for them. And that's their main course of business. So they're not, uh, they're not a dependent agent on you. They can't make any kind of uh, agreements or co enter into contracts on your behalf. So uh, you don't have a dependent agent in the US based on what you've told me and how I interpret the law in that situation. The second okay. part of your question was about how, just selling to U.S. customers, and that um, I don't believe that means you're doing business in the U.S. either. You, honestly, all of the business and all the work that you're doing takes place in Spain because you live there and you do all online and you paint it there and you do all your work in Spain and you pay your taxes in Spain. So just because you're selling it to people in the U.S. doesn't mean you have to pay income taxes in the U.S. Okay. Okay, great. So that's second question answered as well. Uh, also, I, I was discussing with, when I created the LLC, they gave me like a free call for us to post CPA, but uh, they didn't know much about the specific case that I think you're specializing that the, of course companies from non-residents. And is regarding deductions of what I can deduct from taxes because uh, I know like the main concepts are uh, rent or utilities and expenses and everything. But if I'm buying everything or I'm paying everything to European entities, it, it only not everything because my production costs for the prints are inside of the United States, but like rent where I work and the, the electricity and internet and all that stuff and the computers I use, I, I'm going to buy them in Europe. So can I still deduct those expenses? in the so, LLC and get tax credit. So you're asking about deducting expenses. This is the, the most important thing to know. And, and we, and we kind of discuss is that the US, the LLC doesn't pay taxes in the United States. So from your perspective, are you the only owner of the LLC or do you have partners? No, we, we're partners, partners. Yeah. So there's partners. Because so I, I read that. Yeah. Sorry. Because I, I read that the, what will be considered, income tax in Spain uh, or what will be considered my profit or my income in, in Spain will be after I filed my report, uh, my annual report from the LLC, what I say it's my profit. So what I will do, I, I, I have these sales and I have these expenses. So this is my profit and I will pay taxes here. But how do I determine those? Uh, yeah, you know, so that's, what, that's, what's the profit? that's kind of fun. I had this on a call the other day too. Basically the, um, it works like this. In the US, you're not paying taxes. And on the report that you're going to share with the government, you don't have to actually share your income and your expenses because you're not subject to taxation here. And that's the position we take. Therefore, there's no tax forms to reference on your Spanish tax return because if you're a single member LLC, you're just reporting the transactions between yourself and the company. And if you have a partnership, we don't we don't really share any information and we, sh and we show why and we have statements behind it. So. It's all about how you want to do it internally. And it's all basically how you do your accounting from a Spanish standpoint, because all you, you're only paying taxes in Spain. You're not paying taxes here. So you can do, you can put whatever expenses you want here because it's not really being reported to the U S government. You can include everything as an expense to lower down the, uh, the taxable income and then just show that to Spain. But 
from the Spain perspective, it's basically like you and a friend are doing an online business in Spain and all these US entities don't even exist. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay. Good to know then. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, with that answer, there's most, most of the, most of my questions were re regarding that. Like what you can, I, 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 what I you thought, can and can't deduct and stuff like that, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because I, for from the perspective I had, it, it was like after like uh, what they told me here in Spain is that with the the report that I do from the LLC, it I, I need to declare it like pass through entity income, and, and it's like the income that I will get from from the pass through entity will be here, but it will be the result of of expenses and everything in there. So I guess I will actually have to get someone here to, to, to assist me with that. Yeah, you just need to do regular accounting and you should try and follow the, the Spain tax laws because like I said, the LLC is disregarded for tax purposes and all the results pass to the owners. And when you have a partnership too, it's a different tax form you have to file. And that is um, a, a different tax form you have to file at the end of the year. And that's still, we don't, we don't report the income and expense because if you did, uh, if you if you report all your income and expenses on your partnership tax return, it's required to withhold 37% on uh, profits to non-resident partners. So you would have to have U.S. tax withholding, and, and we're taking the position again that you don't have to pay U.S. taxes because you're not doing any business in the U.S. Okay, okay. So what what's what's the obligation that I will have to the IRS? Like, if I start conducting business, do I need to have a, book, a bookkeeping in the US or is it not required then? You need, you need accounting somewhere. It doesn't matter who does it. It's the same, it's the same numbers and bookkeeping more or less is similar in all countries. You know, you have income expenses and you classify things pretty similarly in all countries. It's only when you have really complicated businesses that it would be different depending on how you do your accounting, whether it's generally accepted accounting principles or IFRS, international financial standard statement reporting standards or whatever. So I don't think that really matters. You can do, use a local bookkeeper. Um, the, the, in terms of your annual responsibilities, if there's two owners of the LLC and you have a partner, you would have to file form 1065 uh, by March 15th every year. And that's a okay, partnership and, tax return. And in that, in that form, what would, I mean, what, what's the purpose of, of this form if, if it's not, stating all that all those things when an llc has more than one member it has to it's required to file a partnership it's a partnership and it's required to file a tax return every year okay okay and do you do you guys handle these this filing of course uh, and what do you charge like monthly or it will be like we in just March charge will reach we, you? exactly you can reach out to us in march we, we have um we can do just the filing. We don't have like a monthly service fee. Unless you want to pay us monthly, you can pay us monthly. That's fine. Um, but most people just want to just pay for it and when, when they have to do it. Okay. And could you share the price here or? Yeah, we do this form for $1,000. Uh, sometimes it's twelve fifty, but it, if it's uh, partnerships, we're doing it for 1000 right now. They might It might change. It probably will change. You know, we had a year from now, you know, like eight, 10 months from now. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. So yeah. So then that's it. It's only how, I, I only need to keep the, the track of my accounting and then fill this form. Is that the only thing I, I will well, require you, actually? I, we didn't talk about it, but you didn't ask me about sales taxes. Uh, I, I, I don't know if Etsy does it. Etsy might pick up sales taxes on your behalf, but as you scale, you need yeah. to be concerned about the sales taxes. Do you know anything about sales taxes? Yeah, so right now, as most of the sales are from Etsy, they, they do say that they are uh, collecting it and paying it to each state. Yeah. So I'm relaxing there, but as we're moving sales also for our, for our store, uh, I guess we should start, start like taking care of it. But uh, one question I have is if it, it will have to be paid for each state, right? And how, how can I... I keep track and pay to each of the states 
each sales tax for each. It's, a, it's really tax. annoying. It's best with uh, software plugins. And the thing is Shopify, I think, should have some plugins that you can use that track and make the payments on your behalf. Otherwise, if you have a, a big independent business with your own website, you would have to register for each state that you're required to pay and remit the sales taxes when they're due. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, also, so. uh, we're we're dis starting to discuss wholesale deals, and they involve uh, retailers in different stores. Though so those deals will be like traditional business, not through a store, but like contract and everything. So, uh, in those cases, is it also required for for us to file the taxes in those states where the other company is, or or it will have to be in, in our state? You need if you're gonna start holding your own inventory, wholesale deals. I think uh, is it be like consignment deals where they hold your inventory and you and they sell it for you, kind of, and then they give it to you when they sell it. No, it will actually be like uh, like some sort of white labeling or something like that. So we will get our printer to print a bunch of uh, pieces and then deliver to them, and they will sell well, them on their behalf. Okay, so so you're selling to the the stores, and then they're gonna sell to their customers. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so it's just like any other deal. You're just selling bulk. You know, it's just like any other sales deal. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, I think I think I think that sums up. Actually, I had uh, some doubts, but knowing that it won't have to do anything with the with the US, then yeah, that's it. <laughs> Great. No, I'm happy to help. And who did you use to open your company? What company did you use? I used Inkfile. Oh, I used Inkfile. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like, there's a lot of ways to get the company open, but then it's, uh, I'm, I'm sure you spent a good amount of time researching and, and now you're still spending time figuring stuff out, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, I spent quite some time trying to figure out if I, if it was better to do it there than doing it here. And after that, I I research about the company, but then I have an acquaintance that that used the ink file as well, so I like trust them, and we yeah, have so far so good. Yeah, I mean, still waiting. A, it's still in the process, but yeah. yeah, there's a lot of ways to register companies, but then it's the additional. Yeah, that's why I say because we do the same thing. We uh, open companies for our clients, but we do more. Of, it's more personalized and it's um, faster, and it's also um, you know we give support and ancillary. Uh, advice about all the stuff after the fact. So um, that's why I was just asking to see what, uh, what, what, what you did and how, how it went. Cause I, I know other people use Inkfile, file, but again, you still left searching for answers afterwards, but that's why I'm here. I'm still doing these calls, yeah. I'm still doing these calls for a limited time and uh, happy to help. And thanks for watching the channel. Yeah. Thank you. I must say it's the best channel I, I've, I've seen in the, in the subject. Like for real, there's not much info in there and it's really useful info. Great. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, thanks for uh, being a subscriber and liking all my videos and I appreciate it. So um, let us know if you have any other, other questions and we're happy to help you when you have, uh, when you need tax forms filed at the end of the year. Okay. Yeah. Also, how, with how much time I should approach you? Like if it's due on March 15th, What's a good yeah, I mean, you can parts you in January, February, you know, it's, it's a basically a, a blank form. So what will probably happen, what a lot of people do is they pay us to do it the first year and then they can maybe do it themselves in pro subsequent years. So um, if you, if you want to, if you're into that, if you're a really a big DIY person, I'm hoping that at that time you're, you know, doing 70, $80,000 a month in sales and you're like, Oh, I don't want to do that. It's a waste of time. So yeah. That's what I hope everyone I talk to next time they, I talk to them, they're 10 X where they're at already. So, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully January, <laughs> January, February, reach out. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Well, great. Thank you, James. No, thanks for coming it. in. Thank you, Leonardo. We'll be in touch. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Okay. So I think that call went really well with Leonardo. He had some great questions and uh, he has a pretty interesting business model, something a little different than what I heard of before. And um, it was great to talk to him. So if you thought this video was helpful, if you learned something, if you got some ideas, some insights from it, really appreciate if you can leave me that thumbs up in the, in the thing below. And if you want to know everything, uh, know when I'm putting out new videos, click the bell, the notification bell. And if you want to see more of my videos, click on the subscribe button.
and you'll get updates whenever I put out new videos, which is pretty frequently, okay? So if you are an international, a non-resident, and you have an LLC, you have a US business, and you're trying to make money here, and you're trying to grow your business, be sure to follow. And with that, I'll see you next time. Thanks.